Canada's standard of living is on track for its worst decline in 40 years, according to a new study by Canada's Fraser Institute. The study compares the three worst periods of decline in Canada in the last 40 years, since 1989, 2008, and today. They found that unlike previous recessions, Canada is not recovering this time, as if something broke. In fact, according to Financial Post, since 2019, Canada has had the worst growth out of 50 developed economies. On the ground, this means inflation-adjusted Canadian wages have been flat since 2016. And it's nowhere near over. Canada's per-person real GDP is still falling. With a looming U.S. recession, the U.S. is 75% of Canada's exports, Canada could crash again before it ever recovered. In previous videos, I've talked about the disaster that is Justin Trudeau's Canada. In short, incomes are West Virginia level, house prices are Los Angeles level, and Canadian taxes are halfway to the Soviet Union. It is not rare for a middle-class family in Canada to pay half of their income in taxes. Meanwhile, since the pandemic, Canada's official food inflation is up 25%, energy is up 30%, partly thanks to a new carbon tax. And keep in mind, sales tax in most Canadian provinces is 13 to 15%. While Canadians post TikToks, about trying to stretch a loaf of bread through the week or selling off their possessions to afford groceries, the cost of living is hitting harder with time. Canadian bankruptcy filings jumped 40% last year, while CIBC reports nearly half of Canadians have zero emergency savings. StatsCan reports Canada's violent crime rate is up 40% since 2014. An Ipsos poll found that 7 in 10 Canadians now agree that, quote, Canada is broken, that rises to 8 in 10 of those between ages 18 and 34. So they are the future. Angus found fully 42% of Canadians are considering moving to another country. Now, this is all a shock because it happened so fast. It's night and day from the last crisis in 2008, which Canada weathered much better than America. So what changed? Justin Trudeau, specifically his campaign to convert Canada from a mixed economy like the U.S., into a government-dominated economy like the sick men of the European Union. Under Trudeau, business investment plunged by a third, while government spending nearly doubled to almost half of Canada's GDP. Government workers in Canada are growing almost four times faster than the private sector, and one in three Canadians now work for the government, raking in 30% more in salary and benefits than the taxpayers they lord over. Another 1.7 million Canadians, which is roughly 1 in 10 households, are on welfare. Of course, that all makes it very difficult to win an election in Canada on a small government platform. You're up against the government-provided livelihoods of 40% of voters, meaning you've got to win, what, 80% of everybody else. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. Near term, things will get worse because Canadians are stuck with Justin Trudeau through the next election in 2025. Conservative Pierre Polyev is ahead in the polls for now, but Canada's government-funded media is doing everything they can to destroy him, so the lead is already narrowing. That means more inflation, more decline, more mass migration, and rising crime in what was once a paradise. Read the full article with charts and all the gory details at profsanonge.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.